I'm Zachary Fowler, and we're building a pirate ship. Not just any pirate ship, but a pirate ship on a pontoon boat. Then we're going to use the pirate ship for a seven-day Waterworld survival challenge on Sebago Lake. This is episode two of the build. Kevin from Modern Self-Reliance came down and helped me with the first part of this build, so make sure you check out episode one before you watch this one. Last time we did this, we survived for seven days on a float made out of totes from Home Depot. Check that out on our playlist linked in the description below. But for now, we still have a lot of work to do and a lot of problems we've got to solve before we can get out there on the water. It's not going to go down the road like this. We need another axle to hold the weight. I really dropped the ball in this part of it here. I, I did not think about increasing the weight on the trailer. Yeah, you think we're going to have to put a third I do. pontoon? We're going to need sea trials and possibly another pontoon. We'll see. Oh, we got a shaft. Waterworld 2.0 is brought to you by 4Patriots, the maker of the solar power pack I'll be using on this adventure, as well as their three-month survival food kit. Solo Stove, not just a smokeless fire pit, but the makers of some of the coolest outdoor cooking implements you'll ever see. Fabric by Gerber Life, life insurance made easy right from your phone in 10 minutes or less. Wazoo Survival Gear, everyday travel accessories that I don't go anywhere without. Grim Workshop, credit card size toolkits that will unlock unlimited possibilities. And finally, Fowler's Mischief.com, where every purchase is the beginning of a new adventure. Let's get on with the video. All right. Let me get myself figured out here and oh that hose got a little bit of a leak. This part's a little hard I'm trying to figure out if I should cut that off and we're just bending it or if I use that to assist me or or what's going on. Even though Kevin's left me for Canada, we're not directionless. We have a solid plan and a solid framework built. Part of the inspiration for this I didn't mention in episode one was a Facebook post I saw years ago by Possum King Pirates. They built theirs out of aluminum, which keeps the weight down and reduces some of the problems you're gonna see later on that we're having. They were using it for charter tours and even ended up on the news with it. But when I reached out to them the other day, they actually said, no more charters and they're posting it. So you could be the proud owner of a pirate ship. Your showcase contains story of pirates and their treasure. On your new pontoon boat! Their pontoon pirate ship is 50 some odd feet overall. It's quite a bit bigger than mine. It has an aft cabin that's quite a bit bigger than mine. And it even has a bathroom in it, which is pretty cool. They sent me some drone footage, so I'm noticing all kinds of things now I never saw in that original Facebook post. The bow is actually hollow and goes right through to the water but it houses like this little unit here that allows them to have a water cannon, which is super cool. Now I kind of want one of those on mine. It even looks like they bought the same fake antique wheel that I did, but instead of trying to put it onto their own steering wheel, they just put it on the railing for decoration. So if you're interested in owning your own pontoon pirate ship, there you go, 73,000, maybe you could even talk them down to 70 and you could be the proud owner of your own pontoon pirate ship. Check them out on Facebook Marketplace 2021, Merrill Pontoon, Fort Worth, Texas. I'll also put a link in the description below. I did consider aluminum fabrication for my build, but I'm a much better carpenter, and if we want to get it done in this century, we're gonna to have to go with pine two by threes and marine plywood for the construction. So after making my templates of the bow shape, I went in and I cut those out of two pieces of marine plywood I had scarfed up to increase their size. We fastened them in place by the edges, allowing the front pieces to push each other out to create that bow shape. Then I'm gonna use some stainless wire to hold the two pieces of plywood together until we can get some fiberglass in there to hold it in place permanently. This is like a stitching glue method. It's used a lot in kayak making. It allows you to pull two pieces of plywood, torture them into a shape. Without having to build a stem or keel to fasten the plywood to, it reduces the weight and it increases your speed in build time. The wind keeps blowing all the wisps of hair around. It's driving me nuts. I'll do something about that. There we go. That keeps the wisps out of my eye when the wind's blowing on me. Players are on all the way from the top to the bottom until we got to about here. And as you can see, I can't get it quite to close up. It takes so much pressure, it feels wrong. Like it might rip or break these seams, put too much untold stress on it for no reason. So I'm gonna build a piece right there where you can see Aiden. And then we'll be able to fiberglass up the joint here. Then we'll snip the wires off on the outside. And once they're snipped off on the outside, we can fiberglass the outside edge. And we'll leave the wires buried in there because they're stainless, so that's fine. And we'll be able to put some depth beam, a couple more depth beams forward and we have our bow shape. Kevin was saying it should go all the way out to here. 
which would have made it a little bit pointier like a boat, but I wanted to have the bowsprit kind of pull that out from there, and I didn't want it to be too much longer, and now it's only like three inches longer than the pontoons are here. So I think we nailed it. Definitely looks like a, like a villain's pilot, pirate ship. I'd take villain's pirate ship. I, not a villain though, but like, I mean, their ships can be kind of cool. It doesn't mean that you have to support their villainy, right? Um, but hey, wait, wait a minute. Aren't all pirates villains? Yeah. Technically? Except for Jack Sparrow. Did he ever kill anybody in the movies or anything like that? Or anything oh, ever? I, I feel like it was because it was a Disney movie. Like, they never actually killed anyone. Like, nobody ever died off. Like, maybe somebody was sucked down with the ship somewhere, but like... Right. And he was never seen again in the movie, but nobody was ever actually... Right. Like, even the, fir the first one, everybody's run through, and then they're like, Oh, turns out we're skeletons, yeah. and so they don't actually die, and... It's like knocked out and shoved in the middle of the ocean and drive off, but they probably are okay. Yeah, they're okay. No, they maybe. they just walk off the bottom of the sea for yeah. a little while. Davy and... Jones brought them up. Yeah, cool. yeah. All right, so we got lots of work to do still. I just realized too, even in the galley area, somebody could have a bunk in there because lengthwise it's tons of room. We could even hang another hammock inside of the galley area and somebody could sleep in there. So we could have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, we could have like 10 people sleeping on this thing. It'd be a little bit cramped when everybody's up and about, uh, but we could do it. The whole team? Whole team. Pirate day out for the uh, Valley Maker and Mischief out. team? Let's get it, I'm pirate. down. You have to get us all pirate hats though. You have to get all pirate. Yeah. I got a pirate hat for you. There you go. No way. Yeah. Addy, we'll even fit that. you. It, it, does it fit? Not really. Uh, it fits on the top of your head. Like, it fits my forehead. It fits on the back of your head. If yeah. you just stay there, there you go. Swashbuckling. You see, Peter, he is my son. Once I was done torturing the two pieces of plywood and stitching them together as far as I dared, I had to spile a piece to fit in the bottom. By swinging a few arcs onto a template, I'm able to transfer the shape that I'm trying to duplicate onto a new piece of wood and cut it out and make it fit pretty much first try. You gotta get it bent just right. All right, good. Now we'll do the other side. Good. Perfect. Once again, knowing time's not on my side, I called in some more reinforcements. This is Eric, who I used to work with back in the day in the boatyard. He did all the fiberglass work. So with his help, we'll be able to do the structural seams as well as the exterior seams, increasing our watertight capabilities and giving me more time for other stuff. And if we, time to make it cool. I mean, if we don't get out the door until Friday... This is literally the biggest build I've ever done. It's the biggest build I've ever done. So, if we get this right, this is going to be epic. Yes. Should we go get Sarah's good kitchen mixer? This, this stuff isn't the bad stuff. I'm more of a Cobra Kai guy. Pretty solid. Pretty exciting. Just do a straight line like a and then have a, have a 90 to there. It's what it, whatever. And we can do light mounts there. That way it's simpler. Because it won't be structural if you stand on it and it's flat. Oh, you no, know, you don't want to stand on this part regardless. Why not? I want to stand along and walk right up to the front. Talking about horizontal in here. Oh, you're going to make it more complicated, don't you? Yeah. Get the Celsius in you. You're talking horizontal? If, the, if I had some bolts, I'd put some bolts to the end, take the clamps off. Or something like that. Hey! 
Hey. You're early. We're not done. <laughs> How's it going? How's it going? Good to see you. <laughs> Well, you got the projects going around. Yeah, here. come on now, show you the tour. It's sweet. He's just uh, up in Maine, so he popped by for a visit, and we'll show him the boat. For those of you who don't recognize him, this is Ace from Ace Videos. These are clips from our videos we did last year. We did two on my channel and two on his channel if you want to check those out. He does a lot of fishing videos all over the U.S. and he's always making some tasty catch and cook videos. And we're going to do some more of those soon. Hey, how's Swing it going? By, I've seen you a lot in videos. Yes, sir. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. Yes, sir. That. Wow, so how, how is this going to work here? <laughs> Once that's up there, we'll be able to drive from on top. The ladder will go here, and then another ladder on that side, and that's the galley in there across there so it's still open to the air i thought you were just gonna like do like get some stuff from home depot no this is like, like this, this is, is a serious boat. we started at home depot and decided i don't like home depot anymore they didn't have a lot of good stuff it was ah. like it was such a pain in the neck so i kind of switched to lowe's and okay and things but like this is a this is a ship now this isn't this isn't and because it's on a nice trailer i could totally just like i can go and put it in any lake and go out for the day with the kids and then uh -huh. pull it out and spend the night whatever this is is this the biggest build thing you've built this is the most crazy build i've ever done yeah it's by far the furthest long and stuff and where i actually brought my boat building skills <laughs> back to play and yeah. fiberglassing and and uh and we're gonna paint it all faux wood so we're gonna we got some of that stuff and you, you paint so it's it first look like a pirate ship yeah and then you drag the board shape out with this like streak thing that makes the planks on it wow. and stuff right that is so cool <laughs> So we haven't talked about it for a while, but I actually was a boat builder right after high school, going to the Landings Boat Building School in Kennebunkport, Maine, and then going to Pilots Point Marine and learning more boat building skills there until I finally moved up to Maine to work on the schooner Lynx at Rockport Marine. And this is actually the first boat that I've built since I left boat building behind to become a YouTuber after a loan. I was always more of a builder and never really interested hugely in sailing. But after building the schooner Lynx at Rockport Marine, it was so cool to see that thing in the Blackbeard movie. Although it was a little cringy seeing some of my woodwork blown up, I'm hoping that was just CGI. Good morning. Uh, sorry guys, Ace is not coming with us. He was just stopping by. He's up here with his family, shooting some video. He said he did like one video. Mostly he was just hanging out with his family. I did invite him along, but he's got other things going on. But we are going to get together in November. So this December, videos will be out. Uh, he's going to host me down there in uh, Carolina, South Carolina, somewhere like that. We're going to do some shark fishing, some crawfish, some stuff that I haven't done. So we'll have a lot of fun there. You'll have to stay tuned for those. And... Maybe next time we can get him on Waterworld Season 3 or something like that when he has more time. I kind of threw this whole thing together and it was a big surprise build and wasn't able to get him onto the, onto the project. But before we get on with today's build, I want to tell you about our sponsor for today's video, Fabric by Gerber Life. Fabric was designed by parents for parents to help you get high quality, surprisingly affordable term life insurance policies in less than 10 minutes. We've talked about this before on this channel and joked about how I'm always banging myself up or something's happening and life happens and you don't know what's going to happen. Like in the first episode when I took a hit from a nail gun. Oh, got me. Oh, it's in the ball on, right? Holy. You know, life happens. And as a parent, life insurance and some of those bigger things like that paperwork has never been my thing. It's always been a scary thing to me. But taking care of my family has been a very important thing to me. With flexible policies that'll give you a million dollars worth of coverage for less than a dollar a day, it's kind of a no-brainer. I spend more than that on coffee probably every day. Enjoying my coffee. You can go from start to covered in less than 10 minutes with no health exam required. So even if you don't live a high-risk life of pirate sea out on the open sea, you can set aside a treasure chest for your family with a policy through Fabric without risking your own hide and picking up some pirate's cursed treasure. That's interesting. Couldn't resist my... So join thousands of parents and reformed pirates who trust Fabric to protect their families. Apply today in just minutes at meetfabric.com slash Fowler. Once again, that's meetfabric.com slash Fowler. M-E-E-T fabric.com slash Fowler. Pull the trigger on it. At the end of the video, Check out that link in the description, go there, take the 10 minutes, take the plunge, and it's over and done with, and your family is protected. Now, uh, we got some work to do. 
Otherwise, I'm not gonna be protected when I'm out there. We gotta make sure this thing will float. All right, go ahead and go down slow. I got this corner where I want it. There. There. There we go. All right, now we can pull it back. trying to rescue a couple of these totes just to put gear in and then one tote the Zach wants to attach underneath of the new float 2.0 uh, just for a good luck omen. The totes we're talking about are the leftovers from Waterworld Season 1 which were still attached to the float, the rotting float. Check out that playlist linked in the description below for Waterworld Season 1 or go to it on my YouTube channel. Oh, wow. a sip of that. Mm. Pure rainwater right there. But I gotta be careful where I step because I might go down and through into one of those. Oh god, like that. Oh, it's nasty in here. It's so slimy. While I was out purchasing the stuff for the galley and other last bits that we needed for the build, everybody was working on some aspect of the project so we could get this thing done. Eric was sanding the fiberglass down so we could paint it. I had Aiden on sanding down and cleaning up the old railings from the original pontoon boats so that we could paint those and use those as some protective railings on the upper deck. With all the structural stuff done and the primer going on, it felt like we were in the last legs of our race, but there were still a million more details like windows more windows and installing the windows and especially the galley build which is what I was shopping for. I got all kinds of goodies. I was going to go to Lowe's and uh, and get like countertop uh, or, or little things to put, what do you call those? Cabinets. And then I, went, I was like, hey what about Habitat for Humanity? Stop there. And I got so many cool things for our pirate ship. Check these out. Chris! Yeah. Check this out. Look what I got for us. Remember how we had good chairs last time? Well this is our this is our pirate ship good chairs. Sweet. How comfortable is this? Is that your captain's chair? Well I got two of them, one for each of us. Oh, perfect. So we can sit on the side deck and be fishing. And then instead of having uh, cabinets that were super expensive and made out of like press board stuff that gets all wet and falls apart, right? We got two different, just for like 30 bucks at the, you know, Habitat store for to go underneath the kitchen, underneath the kitchen counter, one, one of those. And this will be our other kitchen cabinet. I found the most perfect chest to be, or I can keep my captain's log, I guess, because I won't be gear diarying and this will be captain's log. It smells like a pirate already. Captain's log. I had to make Chris walk the plank today. He was uh, getting ordinary when I asked him to swab the deck. For the countertops in there, 
Lowe's sells these for like 500 a piece. So they were, they were 25 and 50 bucks. 50 bucks for the bigger one and 25 for this one. That's awesome. So, nice. Dude, that's 500 bucks at Lowe's. I know, that's what I just said. <laughs> yeah, enough. exactly, right? It that's, really is. They sell yeah. that for 500 bucks. I looked at buying some lights for the boat that go. Um, we got our colored lights, so we're legal there. But like for like a moving light, and to put like lights like I got on the Subaru that like fog lights and stuff, they were like 300 for two lights, and that wouldn't give us any lights in the center of the boat when we if we want some for night fishing. So I grabbed up another flex thing. So we've got tons of flex stuff now and batteries. And here, come here, Aiden. We're gonna test out how bright it is. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll give it a bright test. Ready? Got it. Did I put the wrong battery in? It's not very bright. <laughs> there, we, there go. we go. How bright is it? Oh yeah. No, no. She's bright. Oh yeah. It's lower, lower. That's that'll, not too bad. That'll be well, I can't that's see her good, right now, so that's it, good. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably so, a good thing. Walk around, look at all them boat So it's time to name the boat, and I'll explain that in a minute. But to build our nameplate, Matt had to design this on the computer, and then we brought it down to our Glowforge laser and cut it all out of the same marine plywood we're building the boat with. There we go. It's pretty burnt. That looks really sharp. That'll look beautiful on the boat. We'll uh, dip them in primer, and then I think we're gonna try and spray them with gold. So they look really, really, really sharp. So you might have noticed the name right now, right? Uh, it's the SSS Abigail, right? And you saw Matt designing it. The reason for that is, is well, Little Sparrow got to be my slingshot, the Sparrow slingshot, and Abigail hasn't had anything since then, and it's been a couple of years since we did. She's like, how about you make another slingshot and call it the Abigail? And I'm like, oh, okay. Like, it doesn't really go, but a ship name called the Abigail is pretty awesome. And then the designator SS for steamship is kind of like a thing, right? Um, like the SS... Uh, Titanic. Was it really? SS Titanic? Okay, well, we, we, we're not following their lead. Um, we're not gonna sink on this. But uh, I was thinking of the, what's the, the SS Minnow? Da 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 Isn't that, is it, uh, was it the SS Minnow? Pretty sure. Well, that crashed, okay, sorry, but they were all fine, <laughs> unlike the people of the Titanic, which is probably still a sore subject. Uh, but it's not a steamship. Our three S's are for Sarah, Sky, Sparrow, and then the Abigail is the full name. So it kind of like ties in that traditional shipish type thing with, uh, let me get everybody's name on there. Except for mine. After that, I had Matt design us up a new logo for the adventure to go on t-shirts, and then we cut it out on the Glowforge so we can stencil and spray it onto a flag. I'm Doc Rowler. <laughs> he finished those projects so quickly, I said, hey, let's try and do a map on the Glowforge as well. We can put this on our chart table and be able to look at where we're at and move some pieces around. I didn't realize how big of an undertaking this was when I assigned it to him, but he took right to it and designed up a map based off of several other maps that were on the internet, combining them together, making vector lines, and combining all that together to go and bring it over to the Glowforge. And of course, the map was a little bit big, so it didn't fit directly onto a single piece. So we had to break it up to fit onto three different pieces. Once the maps were all cut out, we made up some little playing pieces that we could kind of move around and show off in the video to show where we're located, maybe where the planes were located, um, even made a little piece for a Karen. So if we run into somebody that shoes us away from their dock or yells at us, we could put a little Karen character on the map. We even started a fun project with these pirate coins that gives you as a viewer a chance to participate. More on that later. Well, that was all underway, it was time for me to work on the galley. I had a big empty space, I needed to add a countertop, the sink, filtration system for the sink with a bucket, 
and then the cabinet from the habitat. Unfortunately, with so much going on, I didn't get a lot done on the galley this day, and I ended up just bringing in the stuff and doing some figuring in my head. And once everybody else was gone home for the end of the day, Sarah and I took advantage of the quiet time to do a bunch of the faux paintwork. This fake wood is done by painting over the base layer with a darker wood, and you buy these little squeegees, and you drag them across the wood, rolling them back and forth, which creates the woodwork pattern. I actually learned how to do it by watching this Woodworking with Wes video, and I was so happy with how it turned out. For the first try ever, and Sarah and I just going at it, at the end of the day when we were already tired, it came out really good. It's a good thing we made this big, because the stuff that's going to go onto the boat for the adventure was really piling up. Our power packs, solar panels, we even had pirate hats, a composting toilet, some seriously fancy cookware from Smithy Ironworks, and our four Patriots refrigerator and water filtration system meant we're going to need every inch of that space. We're certainly not going to be rough in it. My apple's getting a little low. I'm gonna charge it up. The fast charge. Oh, there we go, look at it, it's all charged up. That's how you get your apple charged. Sets back onto the two by four. It's like one of those giant uh, monkey uh, clown things, right? You're supposed to pop up, Jane. <laughs> no child wants to play with a Charlie in the box. So, min wax. I, any of this like bowling alley wax, stuff like that, I use it for screws so they go in easier when you got big, deep screws but I also like to use it on the sides of my drawers and your sticky drawers become nice working high quality drawers. You can even do it one handed. Some of these old cabinets, you know, like the, the drawer, you can only lift it when you get both of them just right and then it doesn't, it locks up. But this one, boom. Run the wires for our lights. Got it. Perfect, right there is good. Perfect. All right. Everybody was hard at work at some aspect of getting the project done. We wanted to get out the door and get on with the adventure. While James worked on finishing up the ladders that Kevin has started, Chris was working on the lighting. While none of these tasks are super difficult, they do consume a lot of manpower time. And more than normal too because pretty much everything we're doing here is brand new and we're making it up as we go and covering new ground that has never been covered before. And to make matters worse, for some reason, when it comes to motors and this project, we're not having a lot of luck. And it's not even turning. Like, that's not okay. But, like, how do you fix an electric trolling motor? No. You, no. Alright. Looks good. Looks, looks sketchy is what it looks like. Yeah, it looks like. pretty darn sketchy. Alright, here we go. See, it's our... Started at two, and nothing. Mm -hmm. Feel like a big drop? I'm fully again. Yeah. So I remember it being in shallow water and doing similar thing. That's like, like baby. Nope, that ain't it. This is not. That ain't it. She ain't cranking. Why is it turning when there's no left or right? Oh, Holy that's the that had a little bit more power than before. <laughs> yeah, see that works fine. Is it turning a little bit? There it goes. Is it? Turn. That collar? No. Yeah. That I saw something turn. No, I think I was just me moving. Mm. I don't. I maybe. That's three. That's continual. Okay, so. Oh, so oh there it goes. <laughs> Gosh darn it. So, what do you think? Lord. All right, so. What's, what are you hitting to make that just go up? Just the center button? Right down there. 
There's got to be a better manual reset of some sort that we're missing. Time to figure out our nice butcher block and how to get this in here. We got 33 by 59. That's with the grain running that way. It's about the right height. Nineteen inches. Go pretty close to nineteen. Curves around, cut it, sit in. <laughs> Still got it. Look at that. Just freehanding it with a jigsaw, the bevel. Oh, it's even tight at the bottom. That doesn't look good. Yeah. That does not look good. Bummer. We got 14 inches for the cavity for the sink. 14, but we might be able to reinforce this and cut a space out. That's gonna be our sink. Got lucky, better to be lucky than good, I always say. We'll reinforce it, be able to trim these out and it'll fit in between there and they'll still be plenty strong. It'll be really good. We'll even put some PL on them. And we're back in action. No time lost. Almost no time lost. Sink. Sink. I like to have my life. Oh. I should have done that like three hours ago. expecting to be a lot closer than that, but... Oh. Mm. Ah, the sink also moves around. Perfect then! <laughs> oh, that was nice. <laughs> How are we looking with the car? The car? The new truck needs a sticker. Okay. Uh, he said just for the uh, The paint isn't dry. It was so damp last night, the deck paint. That's looking better by the minute, but it's still coming up. I don't know if it's a chemical reaction or what it is exactly, but uh, we're not ready. I did manage to seal up the countertops last night, but they still have to be installed just with a couple screws. We got some soft plastic still to pour, so we have some lures for the trip, and then get everything packed and ready to go, and we gotta pull it out and test the motor today, the mechanics coming. We don't think there's anything wrong with it because it's just the motor from my boat, but we gotta we're gonna pull it out and test it, so let's get on it. Let's roll. Okay.
That goes like inside. Words. So frustrated right now. This trolling motor, brand new one. Our old one wasn't working. The brand new one, just we're pushing the button. It's all hooked up, pushing the button, nothing. Push the test, shows that there's lights. Push the power button. You can feel the, the button is working. You feel the little click, click to it, but nothing's happening. We've tried Googling everything. We're not gonna be able to do the underwater drone and find these old World War II planes that have crashed there. Um, and uh, we won't be able to jig for lake trout straight down or jig for other fish straight down in 30, 40 feet of water if there's certain spots for it. There, there's just so many things we won't be able to do. It just, and, and there's no reason why this, we shouldn't be able to get this figured out. So we'll get a new one, get it on there. And we're, now we're two more days delayed. It's so close, the end is in sight, but you know, consider it all joy. The testing of your faith produces endurance, it says. So we'll, we'll see. Let's pull it out, you know, see her out in the sunlight and get her the rest of the way ready. That about broke. That was never looking that good anyways. And it's all bent now. Is it starting to shift to the side? Oh, it's sitting right on the blocks. Oh. There's blocks in there. Oh, what the? Why was there blocks in there? I don't know. Maybe Kevin stuck them in there? Like, that, all joking aside. Yeah. Like, if we didn't have those blocks in there, I don't know what would happen. Be, she might be up inside of that wheel well. Maybe we could take it over to the tractor, the uh, trailer place, and they could just add another axle. You know, add another axle and some more reinforcements. I guess is this all this kind of both of them. There? You know, it's like that. You can add more axles. I really dropped the ball in this part of it here. I, I did not think about increasing the weight on the trailer. Just that how it would float when we got into the water. Good. I'd say that's good. Something actually working out. My goodness. We're not going to be able to do it. It's not going to go down the road like this. We need another axle to hold the weight. It almost looks like the arm on this is super bent as well. Yeah, the other side, like it laid down even harder. Now we'll block her up and uh, just keep moving forward. And then uh, tomorrow when the trailer place is open, see if we can't get them to come and take a look at it or something. Or, or uh, a moving company to come and take a look at it yeah. and move it for us. Uh, and now I feel like, with considering that, like I want to almost do a sea trial down the road or something, make sure yeah. we're good to go, you know, oh, for sure. and then and then go to our final destination. Like yeah. this is that's scaring me. Yeah. On <sighs> Can we get, we'll so, order another pontoon, put a third one in the middle? That's honestly. If if get find somebody else with another pontoon and if we it would be such a mess if we put this thing in the water and it just sinks like a rock Getting it's that not gonna up, sink like a rock but buddy okay it, it i'm hoping we also didn't expect it to the, sink like a rock on land so well i knew this trailer looked pretty sketchy with the, with it when it was regular before it wasn't that great i wasn't very happy about it like it was like it was but it it didn't seem like it seemed like a trailer you would go down the road to, from here to the puddle, not not the trailer you would go uh, to Southern Florida with and things, you know? So, it looks so beautiful. It looks so beautiful. I am so excited and so discouraged. I've never felt so many emotions. I, I, uh, I never give up, never surrender. We'll get this figured out. No, never give up, never surrender. Even this jack can't handle it. I'm gonna pull forward and lower it down. What happened? 
Yeah, we're still good. Oh, nope, nope, nope. Bro, what just happened? What? It just does this stupid jack thing. We don't have a bottle of that. We should have a bottle of that. I... There. It definitely was flexing. Oh, everything. Oh, shifty. Ready? Yep. Boom. She's home. <laughs> yep. And this oh. is where we'll be spending the next seven days here in the driveway. <laughs> Why? I forgot that. The trailer. I just forgot. Yeah. I, I definitely didn't... was thinking more buoyancy and not trailer. Yeah, I was thinking all about buoyancy and how she'd sit in the water and and stuff and like better now than it being dressed on the edge of us being like, Oh yeah, that's fine and then driving down the road and throwing an axle or Alright, keep moving forward. That's what we're gonna do. Alright, the pros are here, mechanic. See Finally, if huh? Get us underway. What do you think? She looks beautiful. Looks crazy out of the shed, huh? Yeah. Now we're just but. trying to figure out if we can actually get down the road with it. The, the, the trailer is like severely squat and flexed. Oh, like nice. on the truck, it's like, like I think I need another axle. Well, yeah. never mind all that. Let's uh, test the motor out, keep going forward. So we'll uh, see how she's running. Whew, I just got up to the top for the first time since it's been out and I wasn't crawling around building this. And uh, it's it's a little intimidating being this far up. I mean, when it's in the water, it'll be down a couple feet, but this is like, wow, that's a long ways. Like what a jump off of here for swimming. It's gonna feel like pretty, pretty wild. Lord, help us. Feel that sun this is the first the sun being up here, so beautiful, so amazing. It's it's just like, whew. can't begin to tell you the feelings right now, the, the anxiety of like, did I get this wrong? Did my calculations wrong? I've never misjudged and failed a thing. You know, the, the only time I've ever built a boat and it didn't float that well was in Canada, that lashed together float. It floated right at the water line where I could get on it and I'd be dry, but it was tip, felt pretty tippy. Did I misjudge this? Did I get it wrong? We're gonna have to do a sea trial. We can't just go straight for the first day one out. So we're still, who knows how many days out before we actually launch for our seven day adventure now. But this is gorgeous. This is so beautiful. This is just, this is everything I dreamed it would be. Minus the complications, but whoever dreams up complications, you know? Like how... Oh, wind's blowing things over. Alright, here we go. That's it. That's all we got. All right, turn it off. So I wanted to make sure that this was good. Yeah. Purposely. So it needs some adjustments? Yeah, we, it, so we got to flip the cam on the control box. We'll come over tomorrow morning and do it. All right, right. yeah, and then we're not going anywhere. Yeah. Well, this is why I wanted uh, to, you know, to make but it. But that's fun. not a biggie, right? No. All right, so cam flipped on the control box. Don't know what that means, but Sounds good. So, uh, more complications, but not bad complications. All the more reason why uh, we're just, we're not there yet, we're not ready. Which gives us plenty of time to do more creative, cool things, like finish the cannon. I didn't finish the cannon yet, so we wanna finish our cannon. Don't wanna, can't leave on our pirate ship without a cannon. The ladder turned out amazing though. That works so good to be able to spin around and climb down. I guess every cloud does have a silver lining. So that's one hurdle. I'm gonna go see if I can get a pontoon for the center of this. Oh yeah, great. Because um, it's gonna be way heavy. Well, it's, 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 ha -ha! We got power. It fired right up? Yeah. It turned on the first touch, didn't Instant. it? Yeah. Like one touch and it yep. turned on. Yep. 
Oh, third trolling motor is the charm, huh? Fool me once. Like literally, third time, third time's the charm, third trolling motor, and she fires right up, huh? All right, we got another pontoon. Mechanic thought that this was uh, we needed one more, and he happened to know of where there was one, and we decided, hey, let's, let's, can only float better with one more. Let's do it. All right, take two of us on this end. I'm just actually I'm pretending. Look at that. <laughs> that's pretty light. I'm uh, gonna take a measurement on this axle. See exactly how wide we need. Do you have that tape, Zach? Huh? So yeah, we're adding another axle because this is not nearly sufficient enough, and. We got weather crack tires, so we're headed to the trailer company. Get some new tires, a new axle, and bolt that thing on there. And we're one step closer to getting on the road. That pontoon won't take too long to hook up. I'm excited. Let's get to work. Well, Chris took the measurements of the trailer. I had to sit down and make some phone calls, see if I could find somebody to work on the trailer and reinforce it so we could get on the road. I can't drive it over because we don't dare to even go down the road with it right now. It was so disappointing to have the boat looking so good, but to be trapped in the driveway. Fortunately, we had a package to distract us. Look what I just got. I just got the new Sparrow, which will be available later this year. I don't even know if we're allowed to show this yet. Simple shot? Yeah. The new Sparrow, it's now going to be... What is this Oh, that Look looks at that. good. Oh, it's so heavy. That's so nice. That looks really good. That's G10, so that's like, it's like solid fiberglass, basically, uh, machined. I like that. I'm shooting that now forever. I like that. That's, that's what I've wanted, either a solid al special. aluminum one or that. Yeah, now I got this. So the Hornet must be in here somewhere, too? No, there's no Hornet yet. Oh, that, they're just... still working on the uh, new version of the Hornet, I think. I'm joking. That's... Only problem is, is if I drop this, this is going to the bottom of the sea. So I got to be very careful. So we are jacking it up right now. And we gotta get the trailer out from underneath, which is gonna be a crazy little process. So hopefully we can do it, because the only way we can get it down the road, get the trailer fixed, on the road trailer's gonna hook us up. They said they got an opening, and they can get it in the door, reinforce the front, put another cross brace, and two axles, two new axles under it, so it'll hold the weight of all this. And then we'll be back on the road. They said, ironically, on the road is gonna get us on the road. Pretty cool, good, good branding, right? and uh, we'll be able to be back on track by hopefully Wednesday evening. And, uh, and then we'll be able to do a true sea trial with it. Make sure it's all good. James is saying Don there dish soap. Yeah. Hey, then get the blocking out from the wheel. It's Slowly. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna try and ooch it back a little bit at a time. Now that we've seen that that leaf spring's not flattening out and that tractor's not pulling it, the guys did have a halfway good idea of, if we walked this thing down to 7 Tree with our third pontoon on it, about a mile an hour, taking our sweet, sweet time, put this thing in the water with the third pontoon, leave her floating, and then take the trailer, if we went down that road going a mile an hour, made sure we had a guy with flashers on behind us, Cause this is gonna take, you just saw the friction. We need a bulldozer to haul this thing off. Even if you need the tractor, it doesn't enter. Then have our third pontoon on. No, I'm not putting the third pontoon on. Why? Not right now. Cause then the trailer would already have this dual axle by the time we went back to 7 Tree to pick up the boat with the three pontoons already on it. But. Our third pontoons on there, we're ready. All right, she's floating in the water. We yeah, just gotta go I just want to get it off of here because I I don't want yeah, it I don't want it sitting because otherwise we have to leave it in Seven Tree. Where, you know, it, it will be in Seven Tree until they're done with the trailer, right? Yeah, and just buzz back. But over. we need it here, like we need it here now to work yeah. on it, like because there's still stuff that needs to be done because we keep getting distracted with broken motors and everything else. Well, then that leaves, I need it we could have here. two guys or whatever on pontoon and then two guys on doing fiddly little stuff. We go right work on it down there in the water? If we had to. I mean, if we got a it's screw to on a few... like non-stop tomorrow. Oh, that's, I don't know about you, but I'm not made out of sugar. I am. Work in the rain. I'm still, I'm still pretty sweet. I just sweet. don't see. Well, it would accomplish getting sea trials done with it and finding out whether she's floating good or not. 
Yeah. And we could put the anchor on it and put it out there. If we had a big tarp or something, we could just lay it work across out the there top. Still. It'd be stupid, but you could do it. Get an umbrella. It down, but it'd work. That was not my idea to launch this, so if something goes catastrophically wrong in this process... Except for we have it on footage. That it you, was, you introduced the idea. Did yeah. somebody else suggest it, and now you're saying well, it? Well, nobody had the satchel to suggest it, but... <laughs> I thought about it, but, like, I... Man, I, I just don't want to... Like, I don't want to launch it just yet. I wanted to get... I'd, like, finish... So what's our plan B? Banana, Banana peels? peels. <laughs> oh, let's get a little bit more serious here. I'm, I'm serious. Why not? If we jacked it up, put a little jack right here and jacked it up and put a bunch of banana peels in and then jack it up there put a bunch of banana peels in and then slid it back and the thing is i knew the tractor probably wouldn't work because it's too it's too weak for that kind of thing whereas like a come along attached to this you know would do it so sketchy though look at how bent it is like going down the road at one mile an hour or not looks like if this breaks then they're not going to be able to fix it tomorrow yep. all right Locking. why don't you guys get that pontoon under there and i'll go get the bolts yep what? Yep. Good. All right. What oh. happened? Scratched his back on the. Oh. oh. I got my bone. Right here on that prop. Oh, on that thing. Oh, that thing. Oh. Right to the all the way to the bone. Okay, you're good. Now slowly relieve it back down. Like in the radio. We only need three eighths and it'll have a half an inch of thread. I no, we should go slow. No Russian. Oh, it's backwards. I'm just kidding. I don't yeah, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go in there now. Yeah. All the way back. We cleared the plywood. Let's just roll it up. Yeah, we got it. Oh, oh yeah, baby. All right, let me get the uh, other jack to lift it. Yep. Oh. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, I know. Uh, pull your arm over. Okay. Yep, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Also. Oh, get the block out. Get a chef. Uh, slow down with this tree here. I am doing uh, about 15 right now. You got about nine inches, uh, five inches. Uh, you're gonna hit it. You're good, you can start to straighten yourself out now. Ready? Ready as I get, Lord. Oh my. Uh, over here, John. We're about to, to launch. So uh, we're going to christen it. And this time we're going to christen her the SSS Abigail. Her Abby. Sparrow got. Where's Sparrow? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, talk to me. Hard, but. 
Sparrow's got her sidekick with her. You brought Jim! Uh, our third mate. We're ready? Hey, we're gonna christen her. Uh, we don't wanna make a mess on the dock, so here we've got our champagne. And. First try! Christen her the SSS Abigail for Sky, Sparrow, Abby, and Sarah. Now, let's launch it. You ready? Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah, we still got clearance on the frame. Yep, you're nice and square on the. Here, take this line. Crocs are a little slipperier than I thought. We don't need to go fast. Oh? Oh, It looks like it's floating. It's floating! She's floating high, too, guys. She's floating! Let's go. No, you're good, Dad. Only four. She's floating high, buddy. Beautifully floating right on the line of where it was floating before. You're good. Pull your trailer out, man. That's amazing. Let's freaking go. Ooh. Let's go! It works, boys! Yes, sir. Aiden, give me a dap, my guy. Sunk the dock. <laughs> Look yeah. how even it's floating, Dude, that's boy. amazing. Let's go! Oh Dude, oh, what an amazing moment. From back and forth. Oh, my goodness. That is beautiful. Like, this is... Stable. Oh, look at this. Yeah. Ah. So stable. Ah. It so doesn't bad. rock. Woo. It's about to sink with just us on it. Yeah. Wasn't there supposed to be a diving board thing on here? We didn't do that yet. The diving board's not done. Oh. But we will put one on. Oh my god. Uh, we got it. One second. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Kill it. We don't got any water in the system. Oh, she's not in the water? That really hurt. Oh, I did. Whack the your head? thing just smashed my back. Oh, that? Yeah. Like after all the stress of the other day of like wondering like is this going to work? Did we just screw this all up? Was this a super bad idea? You know, and now we got the third pontoon under there. It doesn't roll far back and forth. It seems really, really stable and very comfortable. Unlike the last one. It's everything we ever dreamed of. It's floating right on the waterline by adding that other pontoon, the third pontoon. Well, that seems close. I think it might be landing here. I'm trying to show you up. That's our Waterworld season 10 or something, the Sky Edition. Nope. Not with a seaplane, but we're gonna make a, a we're gonna attach a zeppelin to this and float it from lake to lake. You know, mm -hmm. forget the trailer. We're just gonna fly. I'm stoked. Is there grip yeah, I know. Right? I am like so we're gonna be so comfortable. Chris. So stoked. Like steaming along, uh, fishing, like sandy and stuff, and sandy like, just paint. like yeah, you gotta be so comfortable until it flips over. It's not gonna flip over <laughs> until, until it flips over. Let's see if it'll flip over. Stop. No more. Zach, no more. I'm countering you. I'm not letting you. Stop. Yeah, it's pretty sturdy. <laughs> you pushed it. Extremely sturdy. I this is so toe. good. Uh, oh, it's so quiet. Yeah. Hop on. Yeah. All right, we're backing up. We are golden. Is that Just, like three quarter throttle? Uh, I don't think so. Feels so good. Yep. What? All right, we're giving her full power. We're gonna give her all she's got. Ooh. It is. That's it. <laughs> that's perfect. That's perfect. I mean, we can explore a lot with this kind of speed. Yeah. Like it's a. We're literally like a pirate ship houseboat, and we're we're flying. I'm so excited. All right, so we are going 7.6 miles per hour. That's so good. I changed it to mile per hour because I didn't like knots. I don't know what knots mean, so <laughs> it was annoying. Should we do the hat? We did it, dance? I don't know. The floss? Is that what that is? No, it's, we don't put that. Cut that part out. I mean, it wasn't. It, I, I it was <laughs> almost a floss. This guy, rate, rate the floss. Is it a good floss? What? Apparently, it wasn't what? that good. He's got full gainer. Ah, no mind. I'm gonna wait until we're out there. Whoa. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, now 
Yay, Sky and Sarah? That is the perfect. I'm gonna grab you like that. Screw it. Ah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool! It's so hot! I love you! I love you! Get set, go! Now to land it. All right, so we need the ropes ready for Aiden. Such a relief. Yeah. Dang. All right. Yes, I have my socks on. Why does everybody think that's such a big deal? It's disgusting! <laughs> they look like what? little Shame flippers. On Shame, Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame. <laughs> that's actually why I kept the socks on. I'm ashamed of my whip. Full power lore uh, secret. Yeah. So she's out there, anchored. I'm super nervous, but because it's supposed to rain Shame a bunch. I, it's so, supposed to rain a bunch and I don't want it to, but uh, I think it's safe. We've got two anchors on it and uh, we'll be back in the morning to work on it while they work on the trailer at uh, on the road trailer. Since they were so nice to say they'd get us in right away. And then we'll be able to feel safe about going down the road to uh, our final destination. Yeehaw. Shame. 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 All right, the video is over, but your life isn't. But you never know what could happen. No kidding. J joking all aside, don't forget, check out that link in the description below or go to meetfabric.com slash Fowler. M-E-E-T fabric.com slash Fowler. I did it on my, my phone. Took 10 minutes or less. Check it out. It's worth your time. It's worth protecting your family and knowing that they're taken care of. See you guys in the next one. Fowler out.